Hey, what's up? This is Acronym here, and I say that because it is finally acronym season. I finally picked myself up a proper piece of acronym, not a Nike footwear collab, but an actual, you know, thing. Um, I always thought that my first acronym piece would be like a J1 or a J28, like a quintessential piece of outerwear. But instead, I find myself with this thing that's behind me here. This is the CP4WS, the acronym CAPE. This coming in at £750-ish, approximately $1,000, is both fairly cheap by acronym standards for a piece of outerwear and also probably the most expensive piece of fashion that I've ever bought. We're going to take a look at everything the CP4 has to offer to answer the ultimate question, should you spend $1,000 on a cape? Let's begin. We'll start off with features. What can this thing offer you? Well, a surprising amount considering it's just a big piece of material. And first off, there's several different ways to wear this. Of course, you could secure this as you would do with an average cape, which of course I'm sure you already have in your wardrobe already. There's a little snap closure at the top, so you can put this over your shoulders, snap that shut, and then, hey presto, you're wearing a cape. But I think it's more productive to view this garment as more of a poncho than a cape because you can do this up in a far more protective way than leaving your whole front experience. Post. Firstly, there's a couple of different poppers that run down the front of this, so if you want to very quickly do this up and get a bit of protection, you can do that. You can do that from kind of like underneath as well, so you don't have to like awkwardly reach your hands over the top of it to do it up or anything. There's also a zip that you might have noticed on the front. So although this might be a little bit awkward, because this is a cape, this isn't a jacket, so it is harder to get your hands over there to do that, Acronym have helped to alleviate that issue in two ways. First of all, this zip is actually backwards, so it does up from the front downwards. That makes it a lot easier to look up, see what you're doing, and once you get used to it, it's actually not that difficult to do. Secondly, they've put their escape zip functionality that they use in some of their jackets on this poncho as well, and that means when the zip is fully done up, you can pull it downwards even further to decouple it from the bottom, and from there, you can pull the whole thing apart super easily. And anything that minimizes fiddling about with a garment like this is definitely a valuable inclusion. You'll also notice that there's a hood, but it's on the side of this rather than the back, um, which might not seem very useful, but that's because that indicates another way to wear this. Yes, you can turn the whole thing sideways and then it will look a lot more like a traditional poncho rather than a cape and give you far more protection, especially on the front because this thing runs super long. Um, I think it's like below the knees. That also allows use of the hood, which is both detachable and adjustable through some little cords as well, so you can get the kind of functionality that you want out of this thing. I also think the shape of the hood is pretty decent. It looks good on and it fits well as well. For me, hoods are not an easy thing to design, so it can often be the deciding factor or a hallmark of a well-designed piece of clothing versus not very well-designed. And I've got to say that the hood on the CP4 is one of the better ones out of the various jackets that I've got over here. Removing the CP4 reveals a sling, and again, that's similar functionality to what you'll find in quite a lot of acronym outerwear pieces. Now, because the poncho cape type thing is more of an emergency garment, of course, it's very valuable to be able to take that off. You don't want to be wearing it the whole time and just kind of stow it somewhere and forget about it. Although a lot of things like this, a lot of ponchos, they're actually packable. So it's potentially a downside there in that you can't just stuff this up and squash it into a bag and like zip it up or something. It's a bit too substantial for that. But I think the sling is a nice middle ground between having that kind of functionality and just simply not having it at all. Then it really would be kind of inconvenient to go out wearing this. Personally, I'm a fan of slings, so this is functionality that I appreciate. I also think that having it in a sling rather than packing it means that it's not gonna get screwed up as much. It's gonna keep that nice kind of flowy appearance. So that's possibly another reason why they opted for this method of storage rather than a traditional packable nature. This talk of versatility though and different ways to wear it, different things you can do with it. Let's not forget that this is a cape slash poncho and not a jacket. That means not only are your arms covered by this garment, so it makes it less easy to do things because you're bringing up the whole material of the jacket as soon as you move your arms around, but it's less protective when you do that. Um, it's not going to protect your arms as well, or indeed the sides when you're lifting things up. And it also doesn't have all the storage-based bells and whistles that you might associate with a jacket, and particularly an acronym jacket. 
Combine that with the fact that you probably won't want to wear a large bag with this, partly because of the cut of it, and partly because that'll interfere with the sling-based functionality and make that a bit awkward to use, you've got something that is certainly more appropriate for a quick trip out and just popping on and off, rather than a full day outing where you might need to take a bunch of different things with you. If you choose to do that, then you're relying very much on whatever mid-layer you're wearing underneath this cape, or your pants, or that's pretty much it really. You might get away with a small bag, but that's about it. Let's talk about the material of this thing, because for a cape, it's pretty unusual. This is made from Gore-Tex Windstopper Infinium. That's a two-layer, water-resistant and wind-resistant breathable fabric, which is also extremely lightweight. That means that it's going to get less sweaty than your traditional poncho or indeed cape, whatever your average cape might be made from, I don't know, like wool or something maybe? But note that this is water resistant and not waterproof. So while for most situations you'll probably be fine, don't expect to take this on tidal wave and not get a little bit wet. In fact, your average five pound promotional Thought Park poncho will probably actually do a better job there than this thing will. What this material can do though, aside from being comfortable as I mentioned, is drape extremely nicely. You'll notice from the footage that this has a really great flowy, almost weightless quality to it. It looks really nice in motion. And that's partly the fabric itself having a little bit of structure but still being very lightweight and also the edges of this um, very unusually for a water resistant garment the edges of this are totally unfinished they have these raw seams and that means that there's much less weight right on the edge of the garment which gives it a lot more room to breathe and move around and all that sort of thing and that was actually a conscious design decision by acronym to not finish those edges for exactly this reason the other thing that will happen with this is over time this cape will age those edges will kind of fray a little bit they'll get a little bit of weathering which of course for some people might not be a good thing to see their $1,000 purchase start to wear or just not look pristine as time goes on basically but I think it'll actually end up having quite a nice look to it so I'm looking forward to see if I do end up wearing this a lot um, what will actually happen to those edges over time. But either way, this is gonna look a thousand times better than any of those trash bag ponchos that you'll see at amusement parks, and it will look much flowier, much lighter weight than pretty much any other jacket out there. Just imagine being outside with this thing, blowing gently in the wind. Ah, perfection. I've almost not commented on the look of the CP4 yet, and that's because it almost goes without saying. This thing looks so different to any normal jacket, it's ridiculous, it's over the top, and I love the look of it for all those reasons. The look of it is so distinctive and the silhouette is so different to a normal jacket that, yeah, people are gonna look at you wearing this. A cape is, let's face it, not a standard or traditional item of clothing. And it's almost a bit of a party trick, to be honest. People are gonna want to look at this and talk about it and understand what it does and how you can wear it and all that kind of thing. So it's definitely an attention-grabbing piece. And what are you gonna wear with something that is gonna capture so much attention? Well, the danger always with a garment like this this is A, that it's gonna look like the garment is wearing you and not you wearing the garment, or that it's gonna just totally overshadow the rest of your outfit. So what I would say is not only do you need uh, some self-assuredness, I suppose. You need to be pretty confident that this thing looks badass on you, and let's face it, it kind of does. And you also need to wear, I think, things that are gonna match that flowiness, that drapiness, and really accentuate that. So in this clip, I've got the ACG woven pants, which I feel like have quite an exaggerated silhouette, but there are lots of options that are even more extreme than this, which I think would also do a great job. Quite a few different acronym pants, for example, if you're on the acronym wave, or just anything that has that over-the-top exaggerated, very wide cut to it, I think is gonna work pretty nicely. I've got to shout out the outlier fuck it hat on this one as well. The two just make such an excellent little combo together. Like the cape, this thing is over the top, it's oversized, it's non-traditional, and they just make this great little futuristic cowboy combo. And yeah, is it over the top? Is it gonna look pretty crazy to your average person? Yes, but Sometimes that's just fun. The good thing about the upper body though is because the cape covers this so well and it has these oversized proportions, you can pretty much wear anything underneath. So you actually have a bit of versatility here in terms of temperature. So in this video, I've just worn it with this t-shirt underneath, but you could wear maybe even a jacket if you want or something much more heavy duty. No one's really gonna see it anyway. So that gives it a little bit of seasonal flexibility in that sense. 
So overall, less features, less practicality than a lot of jackets, and also more expensive than pretty much any jacket I've ever bought. So I shouldn't like this, right? Although it might have less features than a lot of jackets, for a cape or for a poncho, it is surprisingly feature rich, and it has a lot of things that make this easier to use than a lot of other garments of this type. I also think it's so extra, it's so over the top, it, it's so head turning that it just looks really, really cool to me. That massively appeals. And I think when you compare this to Acronym's other offerings, this is kind of not that bad value, if that makes sense, in that an Acronym jacket is so much more expensive than this, you're still injecting Acronym's DNA into your outfit and into your wardrobe, but at a far lower price. This is what, $700 less maybe than one of their jackets? Nonetheless, we have to remind ourselves that this is borderline outrageously expensive. So should you spend $1,000 on a cape? No, no you shouldn't. But if you do, you won't regret it. Ultimately, I think this is designed for someone kind of like me, to be honest, with a decent tech wear wardrobe already and plenty of practical jackets that they can wear when they actually need to, but with something that has that luxury element, that head turning aspect, something that is very, very different, but is just cool and just fun to put on for a small amount of time. And let's face it, as someone who wanted to join the acronym club with an interesting piece, maybe a little bit more off the beaten track than a J1 and a J28, but also something that's gonna save you a little bit of cash compared to those outerwear options. And that is everything on the acronym CP4, the Windstopper Cape. Let me know what you think of this thing down there in the comments. Do you wish that you could make one of these your own? Or do you think this is totally ridiculous? I'm sure the camps will be pretty split on this one. But either way, if you enjoyed the video, you wanna see some more cool outcome stuff, then chuck this video a like, it's super appreciated. And as always, we'll be back next week for another one. So let us have a look at the YouTube comments with my bad Dutch accent. Very, very offensive to be honest. Shout out to Alex Dogson, glad you like the video format. I definitely want to get out there a bit more and do some more outdoor shots. I'm planning some camera upgrades as well, so hopefully there'll be some extra crispy, nice quality stuff going down in future. And shout out to Bronx Collections. Aesthetically, layering is super important in tech wear. Not really something I can do right now because as you can probably tell, it is hot as f right now, it is so sweaty. Um, but in the winter time, layering stuff definitely gonna happen more. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you wanna catch some more stuff, there'll be links going up there. And if you haven't subscribed yet, there's gonna be a little circular button thing so you can check out some more cool tech wear stuff. There's loads more videos in the works. I've got a budget thing, which was initially gonna be this week and I had to push it back, but that'll be coming soon. Um, there's more cool stuff as well. I've got a Gorilla Group cargo pant review coming up in the next few weeks as well. So there's loads of stuff to look out for.